Hey everybody, I'm Gary McLean and you're watching Talent Talk. Just a reminder that if you haven't done so already, uh, please do go to the Talent Talk YouTube channel and subscribe today. As always, your generosity and support are appreciated. And also another reminder, as I am now putting on my screen here, just so everybody can see it throughout the interview, uh, this is a live and interactive show. So if you have any comments, questions, just want to say hi, whatever the case is, uh, throw it into the comment section. And we'll make every effort to kind of address it as the show goes on, or you know, we'll just say hi back, whatever works. Uh, on that note, tonight's guest is a 2021 Leo Award recipient for Best Supporting Performance by a Male in a Motion Picture for his role as Fresno on the feature film River Road, which we'll definitely be chatting about quite shortly. Along with that, he's also had a, quite a few other nominations in several other for several other Leo Awards on various other projects. But the one thing I'm, I'm kind of curious to chat about um, is the fact that he seems to come from humble beginnings, and he strives to give back to the community by working on Vancouver's East Side as a support worker. So please join me in welcoming Stephen Roberts. Hey, how's it? Diddly dude. Diddly dude. Diddly. Yeah, love it. Right. <laughs> How's it going, sir? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. Good. I'm enjoying this smoky weather over here. I don't know how it is for in Vancouver, but it's smoky here. Is it? It's not been smoky. It's not. Usually no. we get like an after effect, like a, a, even in Creston. I was in like Creston. I don't know if you, Creston, BC. I don't know if you know where that is, but it's out kind of toward, it wasn't even smoky there. Um, so uh, it's too bad. Yeah. It, it just seemed to come on today. I don't know what, what the deal was. Um, I don't know even where it's coming from. If the U.S. maybe, I'm not sure. Because mm -hmm. I don't think there's anything going on in B.C., so. Okay. Um, on that note, so welcome to the show. What I tend to try and do is uh, give the actor or the, the guest the chance to kind of introduce themselves, who you are, where you're from, why are you here, you know, that kind of deal. Okay. Um, Stephen Roberts. I'm from a whole bunch of different places. Um, right now I'm in Vancouver, BC. Um, I just got back from, uh, Creston. Uh, I was in Creston, BC and I got engaged. So that's exciting. That's a uh, one for me. Thank you very much. Um, and it was beautiful out there and now I'm back in the city and, um, questioning being in the city. I kind of want to move to the country. So that's, that's me. And I'm here because, uh, I'm here because you reached out and, uh, and I kind of, I liked a couple of the other shows you've done and, uh, and I figured, you know, we'd probably have a pretty good conversation. So. Awesome. I, I appreciate that for sure. Um, so have, cause you said you kind of lived everywhere more or less. Um, can you give us a little bit of a history where you started? Like is Ontario is where you're originally from, correct? Uh, Ontario. Yeah. I didn't, I don't remember, I don't really remember anything about Ontario. I've been there since. I've been to Ontario, Toronto. Uh, I don't really remember anything about the place, to be honest. Uh, um, I was I was out here in BC um, as a young child, and uh, yeah, I've been kind of a little bit. And then I I grew up for a while on the East Coast, uh, back in Nova Scotia, Halifax, Nova Scotia. Um, love the East Coast, and I've been back and forth about a zillion times. So. Yeah, a little bit all over. So now that you said you've kind of wanting to live on the, you know, out the country a bit, um, have you mm -hmm. had that opportunity previously to, to kind of, or have you always been kind of a city guy? Um, as as like a, a young boy at a time, I was like uh, living in Nova Scotia. I was like pretty, pretty far. I lived in a place called Darlings Lake for a while, but I was I was quite the youngster. Uh, and, uh, and I've, I've only now really, I've grown up in cities for the most part, and I've only really now grown in a, a real appreciation for being out in the country. Okay. Fair enough. And <laughs> sorry, I'm catching myself now because another previous guest has told me that I always end my comments with, oh, fair enough. It's now I'm like totally conscious. Of <laughs> yeah. Uh, Anyway, a, a couple of these, like, I don't know about you, but I've done like a couple of these uh, podcasts and interviews and stuff. And, and there's certain things I repeat, right? Like there's, I don't know about if you found that, uh, but there's just, you'll like repeat a saying, like, like the super Canadian ones, like, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. And, uh, or I'll do uh, like different, different, just, uh, or fair enough. Fair enough. It's a great example. If you say it once, you're going to say it like six times in a row in the span of 15 yeah. minutes. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Or no. Yeah. is the one I, I tend to do a lot. The one I do a lot. Absolutely. That's, yeah. I don't know what that is, but add that word is magnificent. <laughs> it's so, so contradictory, but works, you know? <laughs> yeah. It does. yeah. Uh, to, to kind of chat about, if you don't mind, I wouldn't mind kind of chatting a bit more about, uh, I mentioned in, in the intro, you, you've got some a bit of a humble beginning um, in mm. terms. And so maybe you can kind of start us off. I think you, you kind of went through, um, uh, sorry, I'm forgetting the term, but like orphanages and things like that, I think. Did you not? Mm. Or, um, do you mind did. talking about I, that a little bit? Yeah, I don't mind at all. Um, I've kind of, I've just like, you know, I've finished like a, I'm several drafts into a memoir right now. And a part of it is uh, about growing up in foster care. So, so my mom, she's suffered from mental illness. Um, and at a really early age, I was uh, given to the ministry. And then I was placed in the care of my grandmother. And then my grandmother, actually, she belonged to a religious organization. Uh, and I was given to a, a random family, uh, not I think the idea was for adoption. I'm not entirely uh, true. And so I was actually moved with another sibling of mine uh, across the country, thousands of miles to Nova Scotia. Uh, I had, you know, my name, my identity changed. Um, and I spent years kind of falling through the cracks of the system. I just, the ministry didn't check in on me. I've actually received my file from the ministry um, and there's, you know, it's like a 790 page file. And in that, it just shows that I just kind of fell off the radar for a, a few years. Um, and while I was there, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't the great, greatest experience. And, and soon after I ended up on the street, I lived, uh, it was Spring Garden Road. I, you know, that was my stomping ground and, and, uh, and I just kind of fought to survive and, and what I had to do to get by for, for quite a few years. And, and, uh, and then my dad came back into my life, uh, who I hadn't met. Uh, and so it kind of brought me back out toward BC. Um, this is like the Coles notes. This is like the, the kind of Coles notes version. And then, uh, and then he kind of, you know, just, I came home one day and he wasn't there. Uh, he also like, you know, he suffered from his own afflictions and addiction and whatnot. And, uh, yeah, um, and he'd had like a major pass with substance abuse. So I came home one day and just everything was kind of gone you know, and, uh, and then I ended up in the care of my uncle and then I ended up actually like hitchhiking all the way back to Nova Scotia. And then from there I ended up go like, like it going horribly wrong in Nova Scotia back to BC. And then I was shuffled through foster care, um, up and down, ended up on the streets, uh, again. And then, uh, luckily, uh, I found the last door youth program, uh, which is a recovery program in New Westminster here. Uh, and they're known for a, a lot of the work that they do within the community of uh, uh, the community of New West. So um, I ended up there and I was really lucky. Like it was just pure luck that got me there. Uh, I was completely, uh, I don't know what it was. They, they actually just came in to interview me. Like I ended up in a detox center uh, and these people came in, they interviewed me. Um, and uh, to this day, it was like a dear friend of mine that actually did the interview. Um, and they just just, decided to take me with them. Uh, and it was, uh, it was a real, it was really up and down for me. Like I actually ran away from that program after being admitted into it. Uh, and, uh, and you know, some things happened. I ended up going back and I just kind of walked in the door of their facility one day and I sat down in a chair and I said, I ain't leaving. And the, it took a couple of weeks. I was actually the first client that they ever let back into the recovery facility. Uh, I was like the first, I think I was like the first or second. Uh, I'm not entirely sure, but they, it took a couple of weeks to convince them that I was willing to change and I was willing to kind of clean up my act. And so I did chores every day. I really connected with a group of young men that were there. Uh, and I'm, you know, this is, these are a lot of the stories I've, I've been writing about, like in my memoir and, and whatnot as well. And, and, uh, you know, it was, it was a fantastic facility. It really is. I can't say enough about them. Uh, you know, it was, you know, getting into a group of young men uh, that were talking about their feelings uh, was something so foreign to me. At first, it scared me. Um, but then learning from those young men to be of service to the community, to the house, to uh, to each other um, 
was the real gift that I took away from there. And, uh, and it, it completely changed the direction of my life. And it, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't the, the thing all of a sudden everything was better. I went through years of therapy and ups and downs and, uh, you know, a couple, uh, you know, things where, you know, I've made every mistake I think somebody in my position could have made, but I actually came out through the other side and, uh, and now, I mean, my, my life is incredible. I'm, you know, even that trip to Creston, I mentioned this in a, in an interview, but to think I would be on, you know, between an apple orchard and a cherry orchard and I'd be, you know, where all these lovely vines are getting down on one knee and proposing to my girlfriend is just, it blows my mind. It did it on a beautiful sunny day. Like I can't, I can't even explain it to you. It, it is one of those things where, uh, and I do believe if it wasn't for that program or learning to be of service to other people, uh, that I'd be around today. I really doubt it. Uh, so from there, um, yeah, it was, it's been up and down. I mean, my life has taken, you, you know, uh, some incredible turns and, and, uh, but I'm, I'm grateful for what I have today for sure. So I thought, did I answer your question? Those are kind of the Coles notes, but I hope no, that that's, was... that's exactly what I was looking for, to be honest. Okay. Um, yeah. you know, I, obviously I, I don't want to go crazy with this kind of conversation, but I do have a couple of quick questions for you, if you don't mind is, uh, mm -hmm. uh first off, how old were you when you first admitted to the, the program? Um, I believe I was 17. I would have to recheck my file, but I'm pretty sure I was 17 years old. It was, yes, it would have been, it was 9-11 as well when I was in that house, 9-11 happened. And uh, so wow. my memory is pretty accurate that way. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's funny how people have so many memories based on that date. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. And I, I know exactly where I was at that time as well. Yeah, it was actually, and, I, and I'll, yeah, it, where were you? I'm curious. I, I was actually at school at SAIT. So, really? Hey, um, wow. Yeah, yeah, where I got yeah. there first thing in the morning and people in class were kind of talking and then all of a sudden nobody was going to class. Everybody was just at the, uh, where, wherever the nearest TV was to watch what was happening. Yeah. That was about it. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so, do do you... A, I guess one of the questions I kind of have is, did you feel, because um, like you said, you, you said it was kind of a foreign concept to you to, to be able to be talking about your feelings and, and things like that. Um, do you find, or do, were you finding throughout that entire process that there is still a bit of a stigmatism to mental health, that kind of thing? Um, or do you feel that might be getting better? Um, just kind of curious what your thoughts were on that. I think it's better. I mean... I think it's better. I mean, it's, you know, there's, there's still um, people, you know, that I've had random conversations with and they confuse mental health for mental illness. So I think in that way, I think there's still like an incredible naivety to, uh, you know, to subjects like addiction or alcoholism or depression uh, or dual diagnosis. I think that, uh, um, and, and I think it's important, um, you know, like a, a sole theme of the book I went through and even, you know, that 9-11 uh, you know, I, I do remember where I was uh, at 9-11. I was in a treatment center and I was hanging on to a secret that a lot of little boys don't talk about. And um, I ended up getting honest that day. It was it was an interesting thing because I was kind of acting out and being a bit of a um, little bit of a shithead at the time. And it like just kind of testing people's boundaries and stuff. And boom, it was like, you know, all the staff started talking. The group like ended like for a little bit and they were all, you know, and 9-11 had occurred. And for some reason, the, the weight of that on me, uh, I just remember that weight kind of being on my chest. I didn't even really comprehend, I think the full magnitude of what was, what was happening at the time. But for some reason that happened and I walked back in that group and we all sat down and I actually talked about something that I'd hung on to about being hurt as a kid and, uh, and it not being my fault. And that was the day that I learned that those things that happened to me in the home that I, that I was in, those things that happened to me on the street, that was not my fault, you know, and, and that kind of connection was truly uh, amazing to have. That's, you know, that's why I remember that day. That's why I write about um, that day. But that's, that's one of the things I think is important is that the stigma of like abuse, you know, one in every six boys is abused, one in every four girls. And yet nobody really talks a lot about that constantly you know and that is hand in hand in mental health you know that is hand in hand in, you know ptsd and these subjects and and things that uh I, I feel like yes it's getting better 
there is like a, a major self-help influence on our culture now. Um, but I'm, I'm hoping that it doesn't stop there. I hope that people, you know, it, they realize that, you know, not only, you know, even, and one of the things, you know, you know, learning about the indigenous kids in these residential schools and what they went through, you know, it's important for people to realize that also on top of that, the government has dealt with children in a very inappropriate way at times. I don't want to get too political about it or anything like that, but there is so much more to that subject that I think people right now are scratching the surface. And then I think it's going to get a whole lot deeper as, and that's, you know, been, you know, my motivation, even for coming out with my own story, you know, I fell through the cracks. I fell through the cracks for four years and nobody had any clue where I was. And someone's responsible for that. I don't hate them. I do not hate the system. I'm not waving, but I do hope that I can influence, you know, other young boys and people to open up and talk about the things that have occurred with them. Anyways, that's my tangent. I also, you know, listen, I got an espresso machine. I had a couple espressos before the, <laughs> so there you go. Uh, it's all good. So my, my next question is uh, the memoirs you've been kind of writing is that, is there an intent to make a film out of it? Uh, I don't believe so, but I'm writing films on the side of that, um, that address the same subject matter. Uh, and I've, I've learned that, you know, knowing a bit about who I am and kind of where I came from, it's really empowered me to be able to really tell, tell stories, I think, uh, for people that you don't hear about every day for the kids, you know, that fall through the cracks, you know, that's kind of the, so even if I'm telling a story, I'm attempting to write about the things that I know and have researched, um, and, uh, and I feel comfortable, you know, sharing an opinion on those things. Yeah. Okay. And I, I've, I've got another actor friend who's, again, he struggled with uh, substance abuse and everything else. And um, he's, oh, how long is it now? I think he's going on two, three years clean right now. Um, mm -hmm. So he's quite quite happy with that fact. Um, but the question I kind of have for you, because I know for him, I think that it's really kind of helped with his acting in a way where he's been able to really draw from the, those experiences and, and portray them in certain characters that, that may have similar tones. I'm just wondering if you've found a similar thing or. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think so. I think, you know, for me, it's, you know, acting is a release for me. It's uh, it's it's a wonderful release for me. It's not, you know, even even, you know, having issues with substances, um, you know, it took me a while to realize that that was not the main issue for me, that it was for me, it was the trauma. See, I would like I could like go out one night and I would be like, go too far drinking or doing something. And then I wouldn't do anything. I wouldn't do anything else for a couple of weeks until what was inside started to boil over and I had to reach out of myself and kind of self-medicate. So that was like, for me, that was my situation was the self uh, medicating a lot of the PSD, a lot of the, uh, sorry, PTSD and a lot of the trauma that I'd been through. Uh, but everyone's different, you know, everyone. And I think everyone has that uh, trait in themselves that could become an addictive personality as well. The more I, I study it. So, um, it, for me, it was more of like a self-medicating the, the depression, the temper, the, you know, certain things I, I think that I was going through, I didn't really know how to deal with or have the tools to, to deal with. Right. Um, first off, I, I want to thank you for sharing all this. Um, you, you also, I, I was kind of reading that you also had the opportunity to also uh, meet somebody who, who had similar bouts of depression and, and uh, substance abuse, who's no longer with us, um, mm -hmm. Mr. Robin yeah. Williams there. And uh, I'm kind of curious how that all came about and if you guys even shared a little bit of that connection or? I uh, think I, you know, I've told this story so many times now. I'm like, uh, I've, I've literally, on like every podcast and interview I've done in the last month. Um, and uh, yeah, I did. I had like the, um, I was fortunate enough to to meet him, you know, at a at a 12 step meeting. And, you know, I'll say, like I've said in every interview is like, I don't know why he was there. That's completely that was his business. He could have been there to support a friend. Uh, I've read that he's had, you know, certain uh, certain problems in his past and whatnot as, as well. But, um, yeah, he he shared some time with me and some knowledge. Um, 
and some kindness more than anything. Uh, and, and I, I, I very much, I very much attribute that time that he spent with me to seeking out a life in the arts. And I'll say what I've said in most of these interviews as well. I believe that if he, if nothing had happened, if I had no awards or if I, you know, never booked anything or made a cent or, or anything, I think that just that life in the arts for, for somebody like me, um, the richness that the wealth that it's brought my life is, uh, I is something that I can barely put into words. Um, just learning about connection, learning about empathy, uh, you know, just comedy, just love, just being present, you know, that, um, that ability to like, despite what my head's telling me, despite, you know, what my body's doing, like I can, I can remain present, you know, is, is been such a gift. And, uh, and that's one of the things where, um, yeah, I'm, I'm so grateful. Yeah. It was, it was a very random meeting. It was, um, and, uh, and I'm very grateful he spent the time with me. Yeah, absolutely. And what do you think the, the biggest moment was he pulled from that, that meeting? I, it was, a piece of it was kind or... of, it was, yeah, it was more, I think it was more on the way home. It was, it was more, I was on, I was on my way home and one of the things i realized is this is something i'll always have this is something acting is something that i'll always have that no one can take away from me um and and i also realized that i was definitely meant to do this like he told me i was and um it was one of those things where it sunk in on the way home that no matter what's going on in my life i have this um I have this this gift, this puzzle that I'll never be able to quite figure out, you know, these words on this page. Um, and it seems it might sound silly or uh, but it's the fact that I just have this never ending puzzle. I'm going to I'm going to have despite whatever whoever I lose, whatever's going on in my life, whatever ups and downs, I'm always going to have this puzzle. And it's always there for me to pick up uh, when I feel like I need it. I, I, to be honest, you know, I, I know this might sound weird or callous or something. I don't know, but I'm very jealous that you had that opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But uh, that's he's always been on that list of people I'd love to meet, right? Mm -hmm. He was always like near the top. I mean, ever since I was a kid, you know, I was always listening to his comedy things and loved everything he did in film and. Uh, yeah, the guy was brilliant. But for me, it was. I remember watching. I don't know if you remember um, Patch Adams, but that was like. I remember, you know, I was in a I was in a horrible foster home at the time, but I remember just being transported into that movie. And I remember even even as a kid, even as like a, a mouthy little, you know, um, I remember feeling, feeling emotional over these characters in the story i did I, I don't know how if you felt that way but when i was i was like in the just it was a not the best place i was in and and i just remember feeling completely okay you know watching him watching and it was a lot like when i met him it was that same energy it was just like oh my god like he's so nice like he's just so open and and uh, and it scared me because i wasn't you know i've i've shared it a lot, but um, I just w wasn't, you know, an open guy. I think at the time, and and uh, it was it was a real gift to be around. But uh, yeah, I remember that movie. That movie is always it's a just such a beautiful uh, a beautiful film. And uh, I remember when that thing ha happens at the end. I don't want to ruin it if nobody's seen it, but uh, I remember just like that. You know, something horrible happens at the end, and and Robin's like doing a monologue, and uh, and I remember crying as a kid. As a tough little kid, I remember like crying and, and and feeling and what a gift, you know, to give somebody. Yeah. 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 And he just had that ability. I mean, one of the ones I really, that engrossed me was, uh, oh my goodness, The Fisher King. Is that the one? Oh, yeah. So interesting. That was yeah. One. Yeah. Like was, just, that was Jeff Bridges, right? Is that Jeff Bridges yeah. who was in that with? Oh, man, yeah. that was a great movie. Yeah. Yeah. Where he just, uh, Robin movie. Williams was playing kind of the homeless guy and, um yeah just yeah his performance has always blew me away but um 
Anyway, mm-hmm. on that, sorry. you know what? Here we are. It's almost 7.30. Uh, technically, this is a 30-minute show, but uh, I'm hoping you're okay. okay with going a little bit over. Uh, up to you. But you yeah, haven't even touched on your film, so I want to get to that. Um, okay. But I was having such a good conversation there. Um, so, yeah, no, let's let's talk about your film, what's, what's coming out here. And uh, so it's called River Road. Um, are mm-hmm. you up for me th- throwing the trailer up for folks to watch or... Um, uh, yeah, if you want to, yeah. Uh, can, can you give us a bit of a, a lead in to even what a the film's about, and your, maybe touch on your character a little? Yeah, um, the film is it's about um, kind of an artist young man played by Cody Kearsley from Riverdale, uh, and he falls in love uh, with a girl, um, and they just go on a tangent of self destruction, like this um, this path of self destruction where they meet me and you know, I'm trying to get along with people. I have very specific ethics about the drugs I sell. They, they are not cut with fentanyl. Um, and I'm just trying to be a good guy. And then they rip me off. And so I just do what I got to do. And, and that's the, you know, it's, I think personally it was their fault. They took things a little too far and this is what happens. So yeah, that's basically all I can tell you about the film. <laughs> I haven't, I don't, yeah, I don't know if seen it yet. So I'm like, I hope that's an accurate description. Have you oh, actually seen the trailer? Rob Wiley, Rob Wiley is an amazing young mind as a director, and uh, and I love what he's doing. And, and uh, we're lo- I'm lucky enough to be kind of very in early, very early stages of collaborating on something else with him. So, oh, awesome. Okay. Um, have you actually seen the trailer for this yet, or like, have you seen? Mm, I think I've seen yet? the trailer. Yeah, I think I think I might have seen the trailer. I don't know because I think there's a new one they just released, but yeah. Okay. To be honest, I'm not sure which version I've got, but I guess we'll find out. So here we are, River Road. Met this girl. Name's Travis. Zoe. So what are you doing in Canada? Tell me what happened with her. You never think it could get that bad. What's up with that dealer you used to work for? Who, Fresno? Oh! And you don't want to get involved with him. You still in that band? We got a rock star in the building! You have to be careful with these musician types. Especially the guitar players. What's that business you want to talk to me about? Heroin. No stress. No guilt. Did you like it that first night we met? What's been going on with you lately? You don't even know what day it is? I'm not too sick to go out today. Oh, she's probably gonna come back home because I'm a traitor real good. Damn I have to go home out today. Open the fucking register! I was in love. With Zoe or with heroin? some intense moments there oh, trailers are great for that though right get all, yeah, get so all the romantic there. comedy okay got it yeah romantic absolutely comedy. right <laughs> <laughs> one of the top ones for uh valentine's there that's is that yeah, one of the releases uh, valentine's okay. yeah <laughs> uh, <laughs> um so can you can you give us a I'm kind of curious as to you know your your audition process for this one and, and how that kind of went about um, and oh, the other thing I wanted to share with you is I was on your Facebook page and I was kind of checking out some of the videos you had on your Facebook page mm-hmm. and uh, it looked like you're, I don't know if they were audition footages that you were doing or, or what the case was, but man, there was this one that you did. Um, it was a monologue. It was about two minutes long, I think. And that was super intense, dude. Like I was, oh, really? I was impressed with that. Yeah. Um, I don't even know. Yeah, I was, 
I don't know what it is, so <laughs> I might have to go. <laughs> I haven't been on Facebook much, so I don't know. But I'll uh, I'll go back and <laughs> try and be like, oh my god, take that down. No, yeah, um, well, you, you know, yeah, because a lot of the videos I saw on there were like ten to thirty seconds kind of deal, but this one was one of the longer ones. Um, you didn't oh, have yeah, too many okay. of those on there, so yeah, yeah, yeah cool. Um, but yeah, uh, so Fresno and uh, the how you auditioned for that and how that all went mm -hmm. down and yeah, I got a call. Yeah, it's it's funny because like a lot of the things, a lot of these like projects I book and stuff, I always tend to like get a call and you know just from like I think it's a bit of doing theater and being in classes and like and just uh, kind of being around a little bit now. Like um, some like one of my friends will get cast in something or we'll be making something and you know I'll get a call and someone will be like, hey, can you read for this or like can you you know come meet this director or. Or whatever and and so i ended up there's another there's a a young actor i know his name's cameron crosby he's a really good friend as well uh i did a a short film with him called cake day not too long ago and he he ended up winning uh i think it was like lead actor in a short or something at the leos so it was like best performance in a short and he he won that and it was well deserved i think he's a he's a really great actor and and uh, but he called me up and was like hey man i'm doing this thing um and and uh, he's like, I, I really want you to like do this character. His name's Fresno. And right away, like the name, like Fresno. I don't know, I don't know why, but I, I was thinking about Gary Oldman in True Romance, and uh, it's one of my best performances ever. And his name's Drexel. And I was like, hmm, interesting. Okay, that like is such a cool name. And so I had like even before I'd like read the script, I had just kind of the, the, this idea of a guy named Fresno. You know, I just kind of came up with this. You know. And uh, but he sent me the script. I read it. I was like, okay, well, let's see. Let's not get our hopes up. The director hasn't met me. So I ended up going over to Cameron's house. And um, that's when I met Rob Wiley, the director. And so me and Cam just kind of did, like, did our thing. And and I read it a bunch of different ways. I think I like ripped my shirt off at one point, And then I had a freezy hanging out of my mouth. And I was like lipping people off and, and just being this total Fresno. And, uh, and then I like went to leave or I think Cam called me later and was just like, yeah, obviously you like are the perfect choice for it. So uh, we totally want you for it. And I was like, like, cool. And then it didn't go through Cam. I think he got attached to a different project, but luckily the director, because of that connection made um, the director was like, Hey, Cody Kearsley's in this. I'm going to keep on like getting this film made and, and I want you to play Fresno. And, uh, and then I just, I, you know, stayed open to it. And then, things went into production and the next thing you know i'm on set and uh and uh doing the project it was a fun one it was like i, I have to say like i love independent films like I, I really do i i think if you have any idea how hard it is uh even in like bc or like you know canada to to make a film it is so incredibly difficult there's nothing easy about it and if you get something to completion my hat's off to you um and, uh, but I love them because I get to play fun characters. You know, I get to play characters that I got into this to play. You know, if you put me in a, you know, a CW show and say, hey, you know, would you like fries with this? I'm going to look a little weird, you know, being in that show. But uh, luckily with, you know, stories, you know, that I actually like to do, I, I luckily, you know, end up booking those. And, uh, and, I, and I love those films. I love like independent filmmakers. I'm always into like reading new scripts um and uh i love that stuff so it's it's truly a gift to be able to uh to play the kind of characters i've always wanted to play so yeah and that's it. but yeah that's, that's, how, that's how it went. okay uh, i was just gonna say and that's the fun part definitely of, of independent films is the fact that they tend to stray away from the standard of cw and all that kind of stuff right so mm -hmm. yeah, that's just cool too choices. hey man someone Hey, if someone wants to like book me on Riverdale or like, or like the flash, absolutely. It's that's, you know, I do this for a living. This is not like, you know, I'm fine with that. Absolutely. And speaking of, um, that, did you go to school for acting at all? Like the, what's your kind of your background of becoming an actor, I guess. Is, is it um, I kind of like, jobs, um... well, I went to, I, well, there's a couple things I did. I, I'm self-taught for the most part. I've, I've been 
in a lot of the different classes like around Vancouver and I've trained a bit abroad and whatnot. But for the most part, I went to the library, learned about it and I watched movie after movie um, and, uh, and just practice getting into theater. I think theater is, is vital to, to, you know, build an instrument that can uh, really sustain a long day on set. Uh, and, uh, and I, I think it's, it's very important. I, I love plays. Like I, I absolutely love theater as well. Um, and, uh, and just doing anything, any, like any, any project that's, you know, someone needs somebody for like to just come out and read like a table read or whatever. I just, you know, I, I just kind of try to do it as much as I could. Uh, and I made every mistake learning. Like I was like, not, you know, the nicest or most grounded person when I started. And so it was, I think a little difficult for me to connect with people and and have people be like okay steven is an actor like he's an art you know and and uh and uh so it, it, it's a little bit of everything it's um for the most part now like i feel um my on my fiance i should say i keep ca calling him my girlfriend i've like made the transition now she's my fiance i keep calling her my girlfriend um and uh, but she you know she's someone i really trust she's just kind of a natural born director uh, and, and I find like when we go, we go over material, like, uh, like she just has a, a really sharp eye. And so, and she's close to me all the time. She knows like when I'm honing it in and when I'm making, you know, a lazy choice or, or whatever you want to call it. And so she really kind of makes sure that I'm, I'm, uh, you know, focused and diligent and, uh, and I, and I try and be, you know, like I, I train pretty hard. Um, and, uh, and I try to give every read everything it's got because you, you know, even, even, you know, I'm, I've won, you know, or taken home, I've been fortunate to take home a bunch of awards and you know what, my last professional job was almost two years ago. So award after award film coming out after film coming out, that's great. I literally haven't worked in about two years. So, and that's this industry. That's like you're working, then you're not. That's why I fill my time with writing and, and, uh, and, and doing anything, you know, do, just art or being in nature, or, um, you know, just making that creative process process uh, uh, fulfilling, you know, because if you're sitting around waiting for the phone to, to ring, you know, you're in trouble. Totally agree. Um, mm -hmm. I'm a similar boat to you where, yeah, it's been a couple of years, right, since I've actually been on professional set, I guess you could say, paid set. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, definitely done a few, like, free independent stuff, which I do all the time. Uh, well, try to. But same thing. Like, if I'm not on set, I'm creating, I'm writing, I'm producing, I'm you know, cool. Doing the show. You have a show. Whatever. Many people can still right. have a show. Yeah, yeah. So, it, and it does. It it totally helps just to keep that creative juice flowing, right? And it's it's something mm -hmm. you can't let get stagnant. You've got to keep that Absolutely. motion going. Um, yeah. So yeah, kudos to you to continuing to do that, um, mm -hmm. keeping that that adrenaline going. Because <laughs> um, yeah, the thing is, if you do sit, I, I don't know. You you can tell me if you have the same experience, but if you are away from it too long or you do have that long drought, um, again, the mental game, I almost mm -hmm. get into a depression, you know, where I'm just like, all of a sudden I'm like, I'm feeling like I, I don't want to do anything. Why am I doing this? That mm -hmm. kind of scenario. I, yeah. I don't know if you've had the same, same thoughts, but. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Know, I, and hey, you know, I like, absolutely. And, you know, I like that you talk about it because I, you know, countless, like time after time, I've heard uh, incredible stories from actors. You're like, are you for real? Like, I mean, people like who didn't work until they're like mid fifties, like even towards their sixties, like they just didn't work. It was just like, like a thing. It's like, they were amazing casting direct directors, love them. It was like a, you know, and, and something just didn't click. And then all of a sudden it does, you know, it, it's an interesting journey. It's, you know, and I've got friends, it's interesting because I've got friends that they work all the time. They do like every show you can imagine. And then they call me to congratulate me on things. And I'm like, man, you have no idea. <laughs> like you literally, you have, you have no idea. And here's the thing is I like talking about that because I needed to hear it at some point in time. I guarantee you probably like two or three times this week, I've needed to hear that, you know, because it takes a lot of energy to, to pour yourself into an audition, you know, to people, you know, and there's, you know, people with an agenda producers that are trying to make a certain thing. And if you don't fit, you know, they can't really use you and it's nothing personal at all. It's just the way it is, you know, and then something hopefully will come along and, and you're going to fit, you know, but it's, it is, a, I think it's, um, 
I think it's pivotal to survival to, and just to appreciate creativity. I'm honestly, I'm happy. I'm happiest when I'm writing and when I'm acting and that's what I know. Anything else, all bets are off. You know, I would really, really love to book like, uh, you know, t I don't know, like a 14 episode series and then another one after that or a series that ran for, you know, 10 years or something. That would be wonderful. That's not the case. You know, that's not always the case and, and that's okay too, but just the creative endeavor of it. I think it's important just to, to talk about that and be like, Hey, like, I'm not embarrassed. No, I haven't worked in two years, you know, just cause you and me having that conversation right now, believe it or not, I'm going to take this away. That, that's going to help me, you know, even hearing your story, hearing your, you know, that, that inspires, I'm not the only one out there that, uh, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Right. Cause you do get into that state where you're, you're like, my, like, am I the only one who's having this issue right now? Um, cause mm -hmm. I do see again, folks, you know, colleagues on Facebook or whatever. Oh, I booked it. I booked it. I booked it. And I'm like, what? Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> oh, I didn't even hear about this audition. <laughs> and I think that that's, that's interesting too. I don't know how you feel about that, but I've, I've, I've like decided like, you know, if I have like interviews and podcasts and stuff I'm doing, I'm going to, you know, put that stuff out there, but I'm no longer going to post those pictures because I know what it's like to be the actor at home and feel like I'm the only one in the, I'm the only actor right now who isn't working, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's, and it's one of those things, it's one of those things that I, cause I always used to do that. I always used to like post these, you know, and now I've realized, you know what, I know what it's like to be the only actor at home or feel like I'm the only actor at home not working. So why am I doing that? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's, well, it's to get that, uh, that little endorphin kick, right? To say, hey, mm -hmm. I actually am doing yeah. something this time. See? Yeah. See, guys, I'm doing something. Yeah. Right? Just to get that little bit of accolade, right? And yeah. yeah. Keep or I going. could, like, go and do something, like write a script or, like, you know, make a film of my own or write a book. Right? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, Which sounds like you're on your way to doing anyway, so. <laughs> yeah. yeah. With the memoirs, right? So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so, yes. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Oh, right? right is another one I do. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going. Good. Uh, I think we could probably just do like a whole skit on just Canadian. Oh yeah. Races. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Jesus. Oh yeah. Bye. Yeah. Uh, no. No. Yeah. 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 No. Yeah. <laughs> a boot. A boot. A boot. Yes. <laughs> Which, funny enough, I, I rarely hear that. Uh, but really? On the western side of Canada, anyway. I think it's more yeah. eastern. I I don't know. I mean, every once in a while, I'll hear it, but not very often on the western side. Um, mm hmm. I say about. 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 Yeah, yeah. Yeah, boot. About. Yeah. Yeah. In the right. East Coast, I love the East Coast accent. I think the East Coast accent is like, I hear it and I'm like, oh, it reminds me of out East. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Especially East, East, like the the islands. East. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh. Oh, there's a, sorry, there's just a comment that popped up here. So. Just wanted to oh wow holy people commenting on this i forgot people were actually listening in on us so i was like <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been a pretty quiet night i gotta admit um you know it looks like people have been kind of popping in and out fairly quick mm -hmm. but uh yeah um but no i i agree i think i i guess uh, basing going off that comment um is it really a selfless consideration though to not post or is it for your own also kind of self-preservation because of how you know how you feel right yeah i i, I think it's a it's 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 it was uh i think it came to me out of doing a bit of self-reflection i think it and uh you know even i understand you know the importance of having a social media presence like of any kind and eventually i hope to like kind of be in a position where I can like hire somebody and be like, so you'll take care of that for me. And then, you know, when I can afford that and, uh, and that will be great. I really look forward to that and living in the country away from a lot of, a lot of things, but I, I just, I understand now it was one of those things where it's like, um, you know, I just understand what it's like to be someone who hasn't worked in a while. And, uh, you know, and I've been in that situation a couple times. It's not like this is the only time I like, you know, and uh, it's just like, I don't want to 
make anyone else feel like that. Like that, that's it. That's all. It's just like, I don't want to like make somebody feel like that. Like if I'm, if I'm posting stuff about like, Oh, actor's life. And this is me and my, like, you know, and, or like I make something seem bigger than it is. Or like, I like, you know, like if I'm, if I'm doing that, there's, there's something I think disconnected in myself that, I, and I'm trying to get that endorphin kick to, to somehow make myself feel good about myself. I, you know, and I'm, I just not into it. I'm just, you know, it's weird because I, I'm going to go on a tangent again, but I was the last few weeks I've been in Creston, like I told you, and I got engaged and whatnot. And, uh, and I ended up getting this audition uh, for something ironically that shoots in Calgary. Um, but I ended up getting this audition and I, I'm not going to say what it was or anything, but it was a, a wicked, it was just a beautiful period piece and playing the most interesting character. And so I was like, kind of like helping, helping out around, uh, my, in, like helping my in-laws, like kind of strip this deck and, and, uh, and then I got this audition. So I started memorizing, memorizing lines and like working, right. Like just working out in my hands, like, like building some stuff and working with wood. And I used to do that a bit. And, and, uh, and I forgot how good it feels to build something to, to be a part of just like building something with my hands. And at the same time, working on a period piece, which is like, I don't want to do that while I'm Instagramming. So I would kind of prefer to be in nature. And when we shot it, it was, I can say something I was like, cool. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I did a, a decent job on, on that character. I have no control over whether I book it. Who knows? I think like, you know, some other, there's someone with a way better social media following. Um, but I do feel like it just something about working with my hands and memorizing that dialogue and getting that kind of character like right into my bones and shutting off my phone and just getting silence, you know, just real silence where you're not thinking about the next thing you post, where you're not thinking about the, you know, what, um, you know, so-and-so thinks about me or like, you know, has that casting director forgotten about me or like, and just, just getting to back to the real craft you know that's fun and so when i hear things about you know hey where's daniel day lewis well he's off cobbling shoes right now like i get it i get it and i'm not daniel day lewis but as an artist i totally understand i felt so connected just being in the country and and uh, and i think it's something i'm seriously considering right now it's just kind of moving to the country and and i don't i don't need you know you can self-tape anywhere you know and I, yeah. you know, so it, was, it was one of those things. It's just like back to that, you know, when this was innocent, was it, when it wasn't just about like, uh, you know, getting out as many tapes as possible to book something or, or uh, just doing the work, just the real work. You know, if I'm playing a period piece, um, you know, chances are I should be working outside, you know, depending who I'm playing, but, you know, and working with my hands and really kind of embodying that. And, and I just felt so much pleasure from that. Just so much, even, you know, do doing the scenes and doing feeling. And, and, uh, there was just something that came back to me that I feel like was lacking a little bit for a little while. So, um, yeah, it was just re-inspired about the work, like, you know, just, uh, re-inspired. Yeah. Cut me off at any time. If this is like getting boring to you. Oh, Please. no, no, I, dude, not at all. Not okay. at all. No. Not for me, anyway. I, I'm enjoying yeah. all of it. <laughs> well, I love this. I love this. Cobbling our careers one roll at a time. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, love it. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, you know what? Uh, actually, before I go there, going back to to River Road, um, can you tell us where people can watch it? Um, it is playing at, I believe, the Loom, Lumineer Theater in LA right now. It just premiered. Um, it just premiered, I think, like two days ago in LA, and then I, th oh no, I think it premiered in Cincinnati before that, and then in Vancouver, uh, I think it's going to be at the. I have to say this right, uh, Cinematic Theater. Um, it'll be at the Cinematic Theater. Uh, I'm not sure the date of that show um, right now. I think it might be on the October 23rd or something. Please don't shoot me if that's wrong. That might be wrong. Uh, um, yeah, I don't. I'm. Hang on a second. Actually, you know what? I can't find it. If you just give me a second here. We'll just go with a. 
the, the silent treatment. Give, give the viewers a little bit of silent treatment here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because we're live, right? Like, this is all. We are. Yeah, all... absolutely. So I should really hurry up. Okay. So, oh, here we go. Hang on. So October 16th, um, Victoria, BC. And then um, t t October 7th, Missoula at the Roxy Theater, October 16th, Victoria, BC, uh, October 19th, Vancouver at the Cinematic. That's right. There we go. Awesome. Yeah. Well, on that note, um, I want to thank you. I know we're, we're actually like 50 minutes in now, so I, I oh, want to okay. thank you for spending the extra time with me and uh, no you know, at least <laughs> trying to get a little bit about your, your movie out. Um, one, one last question just to kind of round it out and, you know, shake off any cobwebs of any seriousness are you a cat or dog person or do you dog not dog either? person, dog. <laughs> dog person. Dog? yeah absolutely okay. yeah yeah it, it's funny it seems i do find a bit of a trend where mostly men will choose the dog mm -hmm. and will choose cats oh really uh, not yeah. always like, there's there's yeah. definitely a little bit of both but it seems like the majority is that way mm -hmm. i don't know what the deal is but uh um i'm i'm of the option of no pets at this point <laughs> i've no had pets my entire pets. life and i'm just like okay no yeah we're well i'm you know it's interesting because i'm like i love i love dogs and me and my fiance we love dogs and we're considering on and off getting a dog right now and then at the same time we're like are we going to be in la or are we going to be like where where are we going to be so it's like you know in that first year of the dog's life i want to make sure like i'm present that you know the entire time so it's kind of one of the it's like a responsive it is like it's a responsibility so i'm like i'm still kind of in that debating period but um i love dogs so much yeah love them yeah, anyway yeah man's best friend man's best all right friend. on that note Thanks, man. Appreciate your time. Uh, best of luck. Hope the film does really well. Um, congrats on the Leo, the whole bit. Thank and uh, I'll, I'll be trying to keep my eye out, and, you know, open on your future projects as well. Um, thanks. thanks to the folks who've been watching. Appreciate you uh, taking the time out to sit with us and your comments. Um, and we'll be back next week with uh, Tammy Gillis, I believe, is uh, the next guest next week. So um, join us next week for that. Thanks again, everybody. Have a great night.